Hi, my name's Katie, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make hot chocolate with frozen whipped cream floats. It's a really easy treat for a cold winter day. It does take some planning though, because we'll need to freeze some stuff. Uh, started out by freezing this glass bowl and these beaters for my hand mixer. That's gonna help our whipping cream stay cold as we turn it into whipped cream. So I've got whipping cream right here. It's a cup and I am just gonna follow the instructions right on this carton that tell you how to whip it into whipped cream. So it says, be sure cream, mixing bowl, and beater are well chilled, done. Whipped cream at slow and constant speed for extra firmness, add a dash of sugar. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour this into my chilled bowl. I can get it open. All right, that nice whipping cream in there and just shake it a little bit to so make sure I get everything out of there. And now I'm gonna whip it up with my hand mixer. You can do this with a whisk, but it takes a really, really long time. I've tried doing it before and I've never actually accomplished it because I don't have that kind of patience. So it takes about, I think about three minutes to do it with the hand mixer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I realized I forgot my sugar. Not too late to add it in now. Just using about a quarter teaspoon. A dash. All right, start it back up. All right, it's starting to thicken up, but it's still kind of drippy. So I'm just gonna give it probably another 30 seconds, I think. I wanna make sure that it's, it's just totally not liquid anymore. All right, that's looking good. It's not dripping down at all. It's pretty stiff. Um, I guess you should note that you don't want to whip it too much because it'll turn it straight into butter, but um, I was looking, this is looking really good. So I'm just gonna get the excess off the beater real quick. All right, that looks good. I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see it's not really moving much. It's moving a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so I'm gonna add some mix-ins here. Today I have uh, mini semi-sweet chocolate chips, and I'm gonna put those into here. Um, you can use all sorts of different things in here if you wanna add a little bit of fun to it. You could add sprinkles, um, crushed up peppermint candy, um, mini M&Ms. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of my mix-in. Um, the only thing with this is you wanna make sure that they're kind of small pieces. You don't wanna put like big chunks of chocolate or anything in there because it'll make it harder for you to cut out your floats when we get to that part. So I am just going to take my spatula and mix in my chocolate chips. You also don't want to put in too many because it same problem makes it hard for you to cut out the floats once we get to that step because they get in the way of your cutter. So now I'm going to put my mixture into a foil lined tray. It's I'm using a small sheet pan. It's not even going to cover the whole thing because I want it to be about an inch thick, so I'm really only going to cover about half, if that, of this small tray here. Just dumping it all out onto the tray and then I will spread it out. Okay. So I'm just going to spread it out in a about one inch layer. You can see here. It spreads really nicely, it's really easy to do. Just trying to make sure it's not thicker in some places than others. And that is looking exactly how I want it to. Looks like that. And I'm gonna pop this in the freezer for at least an hour. 
I really like to give it at least two hours because it really sets up, but you know, if you're really impatient, an hour should do it. Um, I'm actually going to leave mine in overnight and get back to it tomorrow, so I will see you then. All right, I'm back. It's the next day. I have here my frozen whipped cream tray. I have a Tupperware container that I'm going to put the floats in. I have a mini cookie cutter set that I'm going to use to cut the floats out with. A chopstick, it's going to help me just push the floats out from the cutters and I also have a linen napkin that's just going to protect my hand from the cutters. I've had the tray out on the counter for a couple of minutes now. You want to do that just to let it thaw a little bit so that it's easier to cut out but I think I'm to the point just about at least where I'm ready to cut them out. I have these mini cookie cutters here. Um, there's lots of different sizes, three different sizes. I like to use the biggest size of the mini cookie cutters. I like to use the little heart and I've got a flower and the star is probably my favorite. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to start cutting. So got my star, I'm gonna press down. So my cutters are metal and they kind of hurt my hands sometimes, but actually that one didn't at all. So you can see that I've cut right into that and then there's some parts on the outside, maybe you can see that are sort of breaking away. The excess outside parts will just save for later. Uh, but this little star that I've got right there, I just use the blunt end of my chopstick to push it out into my Tupperware container. And I'm gonna do that over and over again until I'm done with the pan. So I may have actually, I think I've left, I left it out on the counter for longer than I ever have before. So it's a little bit softer than I'm used to working with, but it's actually really nice. Oh, this one fell apart. So this happens, had one that cracked and it's just gonna happen um, depending on where your mix-ins are or maybe mine is a little too soft or it could be too hard. Uh, but I just put that off to the side on the tray and I'm gonna use that excess later. But I'm just switching up some shapes here. I'm gonna try and work a little quickly because I'm melting a little bit, it seems like. But it's just really sort of fun and easy to cut these frozen shapes out. Switch to my flower. All right, that's a good collection there. And show you see all my different shapes of floats. I am going to put this Tupperware into the freezer. It's gonna firm them up a little bit more for when I put them into my hot chocolate and it's gonna give me time to get my ingredients together and make my hot cocoa. So back in the freezer with this. And then for all this excess that I've got here, um, it's a little bit more than I would usually have because I'd usually be a little bit more careful about um, my spacing and, and getting the most out of this. But what you can do with this is just put it right back into a bowl. You can put it in the fridge and then it'll turn right back into regular uh, whipped cream with chocolate chips in it in this case. You can refreeze it and do this process all over again or you can just use it as regular whipped cream, whatever you're in the mood for. But um, you can just do that until it's all used up. So it's still a good product that's left over. All right, I'm gonna get everything together to make my hot chocolate and then I will be back. All right, now it's time to make the hot chocolate. There are so many different ways that you can make hot chocolate. I was reading about it earlier. You can make it with cocoa, like I'm going to, but some people make it with chocolate chips or some people add cayenne pepper for a little kick. There's just like a ton of things that you could do, make it pepperminty, caramelly. But I'm just gonna be pretty straightforward with my hot cocoa today. I have here some premium cocoa there. 
just some regular old sugar, a cup of milk that I've heated in the microwave. You can do it on the stove too. I just felt like taking the easy way today. And I've got a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put a little pinch of salt in my hot chocolate because I like salted chocolate. So let's get going. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of cocoa in the bottom of my mug. A little bit heaping a little bit. And then I'm gonna do two teaspoons of sugar. And that's the other thing that you can play around with too, is different kind of sweeteners for your hot cocoa. Um, so you could try other things besides sugar would be good as well. Same with milk. So this is just regular um, skim milk that I have here. You could use um, whole milk or you could use almond milk. All sorts of different things you could try that I'm sure would make delicious combinations of hot cocoa. So I'm just gonna pour my milk over top of the cocoa and the sugar. And I probably should have put my salt in first too, but I'm just gonna put a little, like the tiniest, tiniest dash of salt in there. And then I'm gonna try not to splash it on myself as I stir it, which I already did. And that is looking like delicious hot cocoa. And the whole point of this entire video now is to get my floats and put them in there. All right, my frozen whipped cream floats. Let me show you how they came out. Find a good example of each shape. Well, that's not the greatest example. <laughs> you can kind of see that's a flower. And there's a star. And my heart. So they're pretty cute. Started with the chocolate chips in there. I'm just gonna drop it right into my hot cocoa. Ooh, it's so cute. It just floats right on top. I don't know if you, nope, I don't think so. Not without me spilling it, but um, it looks really cute floating in there. You can stir it in and get the cream all mixed in, or you can just let it float on top like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a taste and see how this is. Yeah, that's really good. And the float kind of comes up and touches you in the face and it's just kind of like a neat little cooling sensation in there on your hot chocolate. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you try out your own whipped cream floats for your hot chocolate and um, keep watching AADL TV. See you later. Bye.